Good morning, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada, and I'm excited to be here live with you today to share a couple birthday cards using this beautiful gold celebrations DSP. Now you can find this in the annual catalog. And let me show you where. And then we'll talk a little bit about the product project or the yeah, the product. And um, we're gonna create with it. So you can find it on page 15. It is part of the Bright and Beautiful Suite. It's right up here and it's listed down here as the Gold Celebrations 12 by 12 Specialty Designer Series Paper. I actually call it um, printed acetate because that's really kind of what it is. It's like a window sheet or a piece of acetate that is printed and it is gold on one side. So here you can see, so pretty. And then silver on the other so fun so i'm going to share a couple ways to use this and then i've got a ton of other projects to share with you um featuring some of the that i'll be featuring in some of my upcoming events so there are three different patterns in this paper pack oh my gosh please tell me my internet is not acting up okay it looks okay it might just be my ipad all right i'm just going to keep going so we've got that one which is like kind of like two border strips. So you could cut it down the middle, you could cut it into card front size, and then we've got this polka dot one, which I love because this you could use for any occasion. It doesn't necessarily have to be kind of a celebration themed project. And again, it's silver on the back side. And then we've got this one with some streamers. And again, silver on the back side. So you get three 12 by 12 sheets in a package actually, or do you get six? Let me just double check, you might get six. Um, page 133, I should have checked this before. Yeah, you get three. So one of each design. All right, I am gonna set that aside and I'm just gonna open my window. It's a little warm in here, okay. It's a rainy day here in Sherwood Park. It's a little cooler, which is kind of nice. Yesterday was so hot. All right, where should we start? Should I stare, share some projects? No, you know what? We're gonna start with crafting. I'll share some project, projects at the end. All right, so let me bring in the pieces that we need for the first one. So we're gonna kind of use some pieces. I'm gonna put my iPad away because it doesn't seem to be working anyways. We're gonna use some pieces from that suite, that bright and beautiful suite. We're gonna do a square card today. So this card size is going to be five and a quarter by five and a quarter. That's the finished <clears throat> card size. Um, and in today's blog post, you'll be able to find all the measurements. So if you wanna recreate this card or something similar, you can always refer back to that. It will be posted shortly after we finish the live. So let me share what I've got here with for you. I've got my Knight of Navy card base. I've got a couple layers here. I've got white and then this is a piece of the Bright and Beautiful 6x6 DSP which is a paper pack that is so fun. It's got so many different colors in it. It's a great paper pack. So we're going to use this one and then I've got a, an extra strip for the inside. I've got a strip of white for my greeting and then I've gone ahead and I've used the Stylish Shapes dies, which I probably use these every day. Every day that I craft, I probably use these dies. I absolutely love them. So I took, I believe this was one the, the one with the border strips. And I just went to where the pattern was a little bit more concentrated. And I used this largest circle from the Stylish Shapes. And I cut that out. And it's kind of fun because it's got that stitching detail around the edges. And then I had a scrap of this DSP. I love this diagonal pattern, um, multicolored diagonal pattern. So I used, I think it was the third largest and it wasn't quite large enough, but it's okay because this bottom bit is going to get covered over. So that's another thing that I do is I really try to um, 
strategically cut my pieces if I can and use scraps. And then I've got two larger stars in cut from navy and then a smaller star cut from Azure Afternoon. And those are from the Beautiful Balloons dies, which is part of the Beautiful Balloons bundle. Okay, and then of course I have some Baker's Twine because you know that I need to have Baker's Twine on everything. All right, so this card is actually gonna come together really quickly, especially since most of it is done for us. I am actually just going to fold my card in half. Because this is a square card, you can have it open like this or you can have it open like this. I prefer to have mine open like this because I find they stand better. Sometimes when you have cards like this, they don't, like they go flat. So I like to have my card with the spine on the, the left. So we're gonna do our stamping on here. We're actually only gonna stamp one image or one thing. And it's going to be this, it's time for a celebration. And we're gonna stamp it in Night of Navy ink. So there are lots of ways that you can use these printed acetate sheets. This is just one of the ways. You can cut them into various shapes and use them as accents on your cards. So I'm gonna stamp this not quite in the center, a little bit closer to the to the right, but not too close. I do want to leave a little bit of space there. Okay. So that's really all that we need to stamp. And now we're going to, actually I forgot something. I'm going to go grab it. We're going to do a little bit of doodling today, which seems to be a trend of mine right now. I, I go through phases where I do different things and I do them a lot and doodling just seems to be something that I really enjoy doodling right or doing right now. So I've got my multi-purpose glue in this fun little container and I'm going to adhere my DSP to my white layer so that I've got a nice thin border and this contrast between the navy and the the white is just going to make this lighter blue pop off the page. Now we're going to do some doodling. So I love this Sharpie pen. You can also use our stamp and write markers, um, use the finer tip, but I, this is my go-to pen. I use it for almost everything. It's a felt tip pen, but it's fine enough and it dries really quickly and it doesn't bleed through. So I'm just doing a straight line with a little scribble and then another straight line. And then I'm just gonna repeat that on all four sides. And I'm trying to make sure that my scribbles don't line up, like so you can see it here, and then we've got this one down further, this one's here, and I'll probably do this one closer to this side. There we go. So that just adds a little bit of extra detail, especially because this pattern paper is a simple pattern. It's almost like just like a watercolor or a brushed kind of finish. So there's not a whole lot of pattern. So it just adds that little something extra to it. And I apologize, I cannot see your comments today. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them and I will go back and read them and answer them at that time, okay? All right, so that is the base. And then this piece is gonna go across and you can see that it's a, it extends past a little bit and that was completely fine. This was just a scrap. I just grabbed it for my scrap bin. I'm not even gonna bother trimming it. Okay, and then this piece, the tricky thing about these acetate pieces is how do you adhere them? Um, so you have to kind of be strategic about it because it is a window sheet. You can see right through it. Uh, you have to you kind of think through your process and make sure that you've got something over top so that you can add the adhesive to that. So I know that this is gonna get tucked in kind of like that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive right here 
and then I'm gonna put this down and this has a pattern that's more concentrated in this area and it gradually gets less busy so I want this bit I know this bit is going to get covered over I want to keep the more concentrated pattern biz, uh, visible okay and then this is going to go over top so again here this flat edge is going to get tucked underneath so nobody will know that it's not a full circle That's gonna go in there like that. And then this is gonna go over top and we'll use strip of adhesive going across. And I wanna make sure it's straight. That looks about straight. So what is everybody doing this weekend? Any fun plans? I'm actually pretty excited. I've got I've got a good weekend going here. Today, my daughter and her husband just got a puppy um, yesterday. So I'm going over to meet my, I guess, a grand puppy. When I found out that they were getting a dog, I texted my hub, husband. I said, we're going to be grandparents. And then I put dot, dot, dot to a puppy. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Um, and then uh, tomorrow, I'm at a crop at a local scrapbook store kind of crafting with some friends so that'll be a fun day and then on sunday sundays my husband and i always go for coffee um so we're gonna do that on sunday we usually go to we started going to the italian center here in Shore park it's they've got delicious coffees and pastries and stuff so we treat ourselves on sundays Okay, so then this is going to go over top. I'm going to use dimensionals for this. I've got a few little pieces left on here, and my scissors appear to have... Oh, here they are. Okay. So I'm going to put a little piece of a dimensional on either side of this Baker's Twine bow. And then I'll add my star. And look how fun that is. Isn't that fun? And I realized that I don't have, oh, we have to do one more thing on the outside. And I forgot my inside layer. So I'm gonna have to grab a scrap piece of white. Just gonna grab another piece of a dimensional and we're gonna pop this star up right about there. And there we go. So if you're worried about this not having enough adhesive, you could slide a mini glue dot right underneath here and that would hold it well. But this is on well enough that it's going to stick. Okay, let me grab a white piece of paper. <laughs> and my paper trimmer. And we'll cut our inside layer. Okay, so our card is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut this at five inches. So five inches square. And then we're gonna adhere this to the top. So this was just a scrap piece left over from when I cut this piece. And we'll just add this to the top. It's wider than I would normally use, but because this is a bigger card anyways, it'll be just fine. And it's a little longer, but I'll just trim off the excess. So we'll put that on there. And then Use a little bit of adhesive and we'll add this extra star on the inside and add this to here. And our first card is done. So that is one of the ways that you can use these printed acetate sheets or the gold celebration specialty DSP if you wanna call it that, um, is just cut it into a shape and then add it to your card, okay? So let's actually, I'll share. I did this one as my sample in a different color. So this one is just another pattern from the same paper pack. This one is just lemon lime twist. 
and then I used a Pretty Peacock base. I love Pretty Peacock and Lemon Lime Twist together. Such a pretty color combination. So that is card number one, and then we'll move on to card number two. Okay. So for this one, I have lots of little bits here. Okay, so I'm going to start with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of blueberry bushel cardstock. It's scored at five and a half. We're gonna do something to this piece. I've got kind of a scrap of this same DSP that I used on the last card. Um, I need it to be four and a quarter wide um, and then at least one and three quarters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim it down, I think actually one and a half, I think, but I will trim it down. I just knew that it was four and a quarter across, so I'll just trim off what I don't need. I've got a piece, a scrap piece of Lemon Lime Twist, which we're gonna do some die cutting from. I've got some scraps, some narrow strips of white, a scrap of white for my greeting. This is going to be for the inside of my card. And then this is gonna be for stamping. This is just a leftover piece from a previous project. So I'm gonna stamp on that and then die cut it. And then my printed acetate is four and a quarter by one and three quarters. So we're gonna do something with this piece as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take our card base and I'm gonna cut it at three inches. I better check my notes and make sure I'm doing it right here. Yes, okay, three inches. And then I'm gonna cut this at one and a half inches. Okay, one of these pieces we're not gonna use, so we're gonna set it aside. The other one we are going to use. And I'm gonna need to grab my die cutting machine because we're going to do some die cutting. Okay, so I wheeled that over. Now we'll do our stamping and then we'll, no, we're going to assemble first. Okay, so here I'm going to fold this down at the center fold. So you can see that we've got a shorter flap in the front. And what we're gonna do is this piece that I cut off, this one and a half inch piece, I'm gonna line this up with the bottom and we are going to add this right on top here so that it joins those two pieces, okay? So I'm gonna use mini glue dots for this, which I did have out and they seem to have disappeared. I know I had a little strip of them. Huh. You saw me use them, right? Oh, here they are. Oh, I don't have many left on here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mini glue dot and just put it right on the edge here. And here and this is gonna hold my window sheet in place and you're probably thinking well Sherry you're gonna be able to see that through that window sheet but you'll see how I cover it up okay so I'm gonna position this so it's lined up so that my card the C is the right size and you want to decide do you want silver out or do you want gold I want gold out so I'm just gonna line this up with the edge of my cardstock and if it hangs off the edge I can always trim it down and you can cut this a little bit wider if you want like I just it just gives me about an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom of overlap. Okay, so it's hanging off the edge a little bit there, but once I have this secured a little bit better, I can trim that off. So that just makes it a card front side. So there's almost like a little window that peeks through. 
So now I'm gonna take this white piece, this is gonna go on the inside, and we're not gonna do anything to this. I wanted to leave it plain because, because of that window peeking right through this kind of the middle, well, it's not quite the middle, but you don't want your writing to appear through the window, so I wanted there to be enough space that when I go to use this, or whoever uses it, they have space up here and down below to write their greeting or write their message. Okay, so that is the base of our card. Now we will, um, no, we'll save that. Okay, let's do our stamping. Okay, so for this piece, we are going to use the same greeting. I think it's time for a celebration. And we're gonna use these two balloons. Uh, I just need to grab my cleaner so I can clean this because I used it in Night of Navy last. The other thing I'm gonna grab is I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Pierce mat. So with this stamp set, because it's photopolymer and these balloons are nice, big, solid images, I highly recommend you use the Stampin' Pierce mat when you, underneath your project when you're stamping because you'll get a better impression. So we're gonna stamp the big balloon in Lemon Lime Twist. And then we'll stamp the smaller one in Blueberry Bushel. And we'll do our greeting in blueberry bushel as well. Okay, so that's all the stamping that we need to do, but we do need to do some die cutting. Slide those out of the way and this. Okay. So we're going to take this and this and our coordinating dies. So for this lemon lime twist piece, I'm going to use this piece here and I'm going to line it up with one edge of my lemon lime twist. And then I'm gonna do the balloon. And I am going to use a little bit of washi tape to hold it in place. Just so that it doesn't move on me. So I've got that lined up. I'll just add a little bit of washi tape here. And then we're gonna take Oh, I might have to do it two passes through. I didn't leave enough space there. So I'll do this first and then I'll come back. So I'm just gonna do this off camera. Okay, and then we'll do this smaller size balloon. Keep this washi tape and use it for this guy. Okay. All right. So I believe all of our die cutting is done. We've got our two balloons and I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. Let's take this off. Okay. So what this piece does is it gives you this, this fun kind of border strip that you can use as, 
as is like this. It just adds a fun little detail. Or what you can do is you can cut it. So you can cut it close to the end if you want it longer. I'm gonna cut it about half an inch. So it's about in half. And now I've got this fun little fringe that I'm gonna use on my card. Okay, so we're gonna start assembling here. I'm gonna add a little bit. I wonder if I have any mini glue dots left in my bin here. Ah, I do, all right. I normally keep my extra adhesive downstairs in the basement, but I do have one little spot that I sometimes have extras, so. Okay, so I'm gonna pick off some mini glue dots. I find that with because this is a slippery surface, multi-purpose glue doesn't always work the best. Like it, it will adhere, but you just, it's slippery. So it, it takes a bit to line it up and then you have to um, kind of make sure it doesn't slip around. So I'm putting this across the top like that. I just want to make sure it's straight or relatively straight. That looks pretty even. I think, uh, maybe not. Okay, it's close enough. All right, so this should be set enough that I can go ahead and just trim this excess off. I'm gonna do the window sheet first, and then I'll cut through the, the fringe. Okay, and then our next step is to use these narrow strips of white. So these are gonna go over top. So again, I'm gonna use some mini glue dots to adhere these. And actually I'll put them on the back of both. I just wanted there to be just a hint of contrast between the colors and I find white and black are just such great colors to use when you're looking for that contrast. You can really make your projects pop with that little hint of black or white. Okay so this thinner one I'm gonna put up at the top and you're gonna see that whole strip Whereas the bottom one, you're only gonna see a little bit peeking out. Okay, again, let's use my grid mat. Okay, that looks pretty straight. And this guy's a little bit longer. So this is gonna cover up this little bit of adhesive here. Okay, and we'll trim off our pieces. This card is a little bit more, oh, look at that. I completely missed the, well, let's just cut it off. Okay, all right. So that doesn't look the best yet, but you'll see. All right, now this piece is gonna go across like this. So there's, there's just a hint of the white showing. And I'll line it up with one side just to get, again, just in case I need to trim off a little bit. So here, the white isn't super noticeable because you can see the white in the back, but when you have it standing up, I'll show you in a minute here. So when it's standing up, when it's open like that, you can see that that white just adds a nice little detail. All right, so let's trim off this excess. It's funny how you can measure. Think that you've got the same measurements. Let's 
slightly different. And trim off the excess here. All right, there we go. Okay, now let's embellish. So I've got my lemon lime twist balloon, which I'm gonna use some dimensionals for. Or I'm gonna use dimensionals to adhere it. And pop this right on here like this. So I was mindful not to put dimensionals too close to the bottom, knowing that this would peek through on this side. And then this guy's gonna get a dimensional as well. I'll just put a couple smaller ones here. That's gonna go on there like that. And then we're gonna use a mini glue dot for our bow. So this was tied using some lemon lime twist ribbon. It comes in a ribbon combo pack. I think it's got, it's got a striped Petal pink, I think is the pink that's in it. It's a little bit wider, so they're two different ribbons. All right, and then we've got our greeting. Just gonna angle cut this. I'm gonna take my bone folder and just kind of curl it up. And I'll use a dimensional where it's raised up and then some flat adhesive here. This just gives the greeting just a little bit of dimension. We'll close that up. Put that down like that. And then our last step is just to add some embellishments. So I'm going to use these tinsel gems. This is the four pack. We've got a three pack as well. But these guys here are blueberry bushels. So I'm just going to do tone on tone just for a subtle little embellishment. And there we go. There is another way that you can use the fun printed acetate. So let me bring back the other card. I do have, this month's tutorial club actually focuses on printed acetate and we're sharing additional ways to use it. I'll give you a little peek at the cards. They're so cute. So we've got this one. We've got this one and we've got this one. Super fun cards this month and you have until the 25th to sign up. There is a link to where you can find all the information in the description below. But before I say goodbye, I want to share some other upcoming classes that I have got going on, that I've got going on. Um, so the beginning of September, I have my, I think, believe it's our fifth color club. And even if you aren't a member of the color club, you can still join us. Every month I pick two or three colors to work with and we kind of um, focus on different color combinations that we can use with those colors. And they're all kind of new colors. Um, and I pick a bundle or a collection to work with. And next month we're working with the paper florist dies. These dies are incredible. So here's a little peek at the three cards that we're gonna make. Um, so we've got this guy, this beautiful one, and this one here. So beautiful. And it is available in person or to go. There is a link, if you check the events page, there's a link in the description where you can find all the information. You do not need to have these dies in order to participate in the class. You're gonna want them after the class, but you don't need to have them because I will include all of the pre-cut pieces in the class, um, uh, as well as a tutorial, and links to the videos that will show you how they come together. So it's a great class. If you've got a greeting set, you are good to go for this class. Um, so all the details are on my events page. Deadline to register for this one is the 20th of August. So it's coming up quick. And then I wanted to share details of, or a peek at the cards that we'll be doing at my Fall Fest um, and the sampler. So I have a one day crop in September, September 16th. It's a Saturday. You can come and you can bring your stuff and you can craft all day from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. 
uh, all the details of what's included is included under the Fall Fest. Um, oh, sorry, Fall Frenzy. I'm calling it Fall Fest. Fall Frenzy uh, event. But there are also two optional classes. So if you come as a cropper, you always get a make and take. And I always make these make and takes special. So let me grab the make and take here. So we are gonna do a fall sampler and it turned out absolutely amazing. So it is a beautiful sampler that is exclusive to people who are croppers. So whether you attend the crop or you get the crop to go because that is an option because I know not everybody is available to spend the day crafting. So whether you're local or anywhere in Canada, it doesn't matter. You can participate as a cropper. Um, just check the event for all the details. And then there are two additional optional classes. So one of them is a fall card class and these are the four cards. Actually, we're gonna be making five cards, but this one, this one, this one, and this one. So those are four of the five cards that we'll be making. And um, you don't have to be a cropper to attend. So if you want to drop in just for the fall class, you can do that. And then there is also a scrapbook class in the afternoon where we're going to do a two page kind of summer themed um, layout. And again, all the information is there. That's on my task list today is to design that layout. So I'll be sharing peaks with you for sure. But uh, registration, I believe, is the end of this month for the Fall Frenzy. So make sure you check that out and see if there's any options. There are any options that you would like to participate in because I'd love to have you. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed today's cards. I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. And I will not be here for Friday Live next week because I will be in Vegas for Stampin' Up's backstage event. Um, so... Yeah, I'll have something posted on my blog and I'll share it here on Facebook, but I will be back the following week with a Facebook Live. All right, take care. Bye, guys.